Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. As you can see, I have an empty board today and what could we be doing? Probably making a board out of something, another charcuterie board, but what's it gonna be? A brunch board. Let's go, let's get into prep. By the way, everything I make here, feel free to interchange, put your own spin on it and let's get into it, here we go. All right, all right. So before anyone calls me out, yes, I know I have a stain. Let's move on. We have our eggs, six eggs per pie, shredded cheddar cheese. I have big ones for that nice cheese pull. Broccoli, store-bought pie crust, three-fourths cup of milk, what any kind you like, sour cream, it's my secret, and any kind of rub that you like. I use like a chicken rub. I think it's really good. So I'm going to put the cheese in the bowl, take a really long time to pick it up, yeah. All right, so here's all the broccoli. Just a pet peeve I have. How annoying is it, all those little broccoli florets whenever you're cutting broccoli small like that? I literally can't stand it. That's why I use that thing to pick it up. Honestly, the absolute worst. Honestly, I picked it up pretty good though. All right, so here's everything in a bowl. We love that, we love that. Crack six eggs in there right in the bowl because why? You live life on the edge and if there's a shell, then you're screwed, but there was no shells. Pour our milk in, that's what I'm talking about. All right, and then we have our sour cream. I like to call it the sour cream. I think it adds a really, really nice flavor and it adds a really great creaminess into it. I highly recommend it. Anywhere from like two tablespoons to one fourth of a cup would be just enough to make it creamy and it adds a really awesome flavor. I'm gonna whisk this up. And before you know it, it will be all mixed together. Oh, some cough in the whisk. Now this looks really, really overfilled, which quiche rises and falls. It rises a little bit when you put it in the oven, obviously, and then when you take it out, it will fall a bit. And you will see later, it ends up being the perfect even coat that you want it to be. I personally make mine a bit more cheesier than others. That's just because who doesn't love cheese? Anyway, I put this in the oven at 350 until you can stick a toothpick in and it doesn't run clear. Okay, so since you don't need me to tell you how to follow the instructions on the back of it, this quick box, this is the perfect time for me to give a shout out to Brunchaholic NYC. This is a woman owned business run by a colleague of mine from work and let me tell you something, she does her research. Every weekend she is hitting up all the best brunch spots in NYC sharing that on instagram you have to give them a follow at brunchaholics i will tag it in my description below give them a follow buy a box the july box literally had strawberry champagne syrup with edible rose petals and i do not know one person who could not use that in their life just to make it better so everyone stop what you're doing go on instagram at brunchaholics follow them like their pics maybe even buy a box and support a women-owned business she is someone who absolutely deserves it and back to our regularly scheduled programming of making the brunch board so i have my trusty dusty handy dandy pancake skillet that i absolutely love this is a pampered chef i guess you can call it like a, a gun. Um, I don't know a better word for it, but I use it for a lot of things. Spray your skillet. And I'm using this so I could accurately make small mini pancakes because I'm basically like the worst when it comes to this. So I thought it would be very helpful to use something a bit more controlled. Feel free to use a piping bag. I feel like that would help. Or I know a lot of people use measuring cups. That's really great as well. But you know, this is just me flipping pancakes having a good time anyway you should probably speed this up and go to the waffles after i have my beautiful pancakes oh my god look at them they're so beautiful oh that's hot okay spray it so it doesn't stick we've all done it we've all didn't spray it and then it stuck when we opened how sad was that Look at this pour. I am soon going to find out that it was not a good of a pour as I originally thought. Oh, look, I added more, and that was my downfall. Don't you love to see it? And here it comes. Oh God, I love that for me. 
Oh yeah, amazing. You know what, that's the kind of thing you want to happen when you have company coming. You know what I mean? Just like an additional mess. Anyway, graded baking sheet for bacon. Total game changer. I'm a huge fan of making bacon in the oven. I think it's less of a mess. You get equal amount of crispy factor. Also, do you notice how thick this bacon is? That is because my dad makes, oh, dropped it. That is because my dad makes homemade bacon. And it is absolutely amazing, total game changer, the way it tastes. It is fresh and delicious. Look at that. Oh, and the first waffle is out. I could just peel that little edge off. That's not too much of a big deal. Oh, second pancake with the magic of editing. Oh, did I just call it a pancake? It's a waffle. Okay, so I take dredging chicken very, very seriously. I take a lot of pride in it. I think it's one of the better things that I do in the kitchen. Anyway, one egg will be enough, a little bit of milk. I'm gonna cover these with panko crumbs and I'm going to mix flour and meat rub. That is the same exact meat rub I put in the quiche. I kind of use it for a lot of things. It's almost like my like go-to seasoning in the kitchen. Anyway, you're gonna need a lot of seasoning in there just because when you mix it with the flour, it doesn't necessarily translate once you eat it. So you want a lot of seasoning in there so it does translate. Okay, mix everything up. And I'm just gonna throw all of the little chicken cut up pieces right in there and just mix it all up in the flour. You wanna make sure they're all nice and coated. And it's honestly just so much easier to get them all in the flour first, just so they can start drying out. That way I can clean my hands off, wipe it down. Honestly, when you're using chicken, you wanna be cleaning constantly because cross-contamination is not the tea. So we're gonna dip it in the egg, we're gonna dip it in the panko, if this was like an Italian chicken parm type of vibe, I would be putting Parmesan in the egg to make it more of like a thicker batter. So the breadcrumb stick, and I'd be using breadcrumbs instead of panko. But this is not what we're doing today. And I could do that at a later date. So I'm just gonna speed up the process here. Make sure you pat in the panko on the top. It will make it stick and it will be a lot better. Honestly, I have to give myself a lot of props for the amount of stuff I use. Yeah, I went a little bit overboard on the flour. But I mean, the panko crumb is pretty good. All right, so let's get building here. I cut the waffle into four and then I cut it in eight. What I'm gonna do is take a little triangle, put a piece of chicken on, squeeze a bit of that hot honey. If you don't have hot honey, regular honey works just as fine. And you are going to put the other symmetrical top on it and then close it up with a toothpick. How cute are they? I love that. 360 view, oh. Something's always gotta go wrong. You know what I mean? That's just my life. I'm gonna make another one just so we have, just so we have that perfect shot. Just a little bit, just a little dot. Too much will be a little bit overpowering. You can see they're the perfect little bite-sized things. And honestly, these were awesome. Spice was good. The crunch, the waffles, everything was totally there. Okay, so off camera I cut the bagels in half and then I cut them in half again and I also laddered them just because I think the presentation for that would kind of be the best just because bagels are a little large so just leaving them out and uncut is hard for the person eating them. I'm going to kind of make a snake right in the center with the pancakes. One, two, three, four. There we go. Always put the nice ones on the top the best you can. And then you're going to come to see that I'm going to move the chicken and waffles around quite a bit because I can't decide where I want them. Partly because I think they're the prettiest thing ever and also they're a little bit large and I don't want them to block anything in front of it. I also made off camera these little feta cucumber and tomato bites which is basically mini sliced cucumbers, chunks of feta, and a little grape tomato on a toothpick. These are great little refreshing things to put on the side as a garnish, just something to kind of cleanse the palate and isn't too filling. At the bagel store, they make homemade vegetable cream cheese. I'm gonna take it out of the plastic jar and put it in this cute little mason jar. Presentation is key on any of these types of things. Putting it in this jar actually goes a long way and you wouldn't believe the compliments I got. People thought I made it, which I do like to make a lot of homemade stuff, but what's a good corner to cut every so often, am I right? How good does that look? I'm gonna put the remaining 
the cucumber feta bites in the corner over there. And this is what I was talking about with the quiche, that it does fall and it does become that beautiful, even layer where if I filled it less, it would be deeper and the presentation would be off. So I'm going to be moving things as always because I can never decide where I want to put things. And that's just a great point to make where the first place you put it does not have to be the last place you put it. Don't be afraid to move stuff. I'm going to take maple syrup and put it in another one of these little mason jars that I have. I honestly collect these from the dollar store. I highly recommend. It just makes everything look better. Now these are little Caesar pinwheels. They're a great lunch to the brunch, if you know what I'm talking about. You can use deli pinwheels. Those would be awesome. But it's just something a little bit different than breakfast and honestly puts the unch in brunch. How many times am I going to say that? Because I literally love that I thought of it. Anyway, I'm going to separate these, put these around. I love Caesar roll-ups. They are absolutely amazing. And I'm not going to show all the recipes during these videos. But if you do want to see anything in here that I did not already tell you how to make, please comment. I will make a video, I absolutely promise. And these are going to be for the bagels, sliced tomatoes and onions with the cream cheese. If you're not familiar with it, get into it. It is so, so, so good. Cream cheese, thinly sliced tomato, some onion. It is honestly a fire a way to have a bagel. Highly recommend. Now the bacon is going to go right in front and center because it's bacon. Like, I'm not going to hide it. I'm going to put it right in the front. Oh, I am moving the chicken and waffles again. I want them to be in the front because as I said before, they're absolutely beautiful. I'm so proud of them. I cannot, like, make these. Like, make these chicken and waffles and tag me because I cannot say enough good things about them. I'm obsessed with them. And now here is a sped up version. Oh, drop the peach in the quiche. Here's a sped up version of me regretting that I didn't mix the fruit in a bowl. I like separated them on a plate when I cut them. I don't know why I did that. I just make a little fruit salad and put it as a garnish last, obviously, because putting the little things that you want to garnish last is really important because you can fill those little holes, which makes it look like you have a really, really full board. And that is a great tip to do. And finishing touches, I'm going to take powdered sugar in a small little colander and just kind of shake it right over the pancakes. It was honestly a really great touch. I gotta to give myself a lot of props and I highly recommend doing this. That's a lot of sugar, I live. Okay, cheers guys. Here it is, the final product. I actually entered this into the Chrissy Teigen's Craving Sport Challenge. I did not win, but I really feel like I did by the amount of support I got. So thank you, thank you, thank you for all the tags. Okay guys, so here is the brunch board. We have fruit, we have pancakes, chicken and waffle bites, feta cucumber tomato bites, bagels, bacon. <laughs> we got Caesar wrap roll-ups, and I think I just about covered everything. Oh, broccoli cheddar quiche, this thing is the best. Feel free to leave any comments about the next board I should make, and enjoy guys.